Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise your name, Father, as we continue in the avenue of truth and holiness in this time we live in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forever. Thank you, Lord. As we continue on, I'm going to, uh, again, we'll do this again because we, it's just astounding what God is doing in this time. He's allowing men like James Rice with the uh, outreach that they have with the radio broadcast to continue in their perversion in lives. And then things that come out of their mouth are continually, it's just an amazing thing to watch how when somebody is walking in darkness, and Jesus warned him, he says, hey, if that darkness that is in you, if that light that is in you be darkness, how great is the darkness? And that's what it is, it's great. And let's uh, go to James again, and then we'll go to Ralph, and we'll carry on with what we're doing here this day. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about uh, uh, the what did he talk about? Many he talked about many things. The, the sad, you know, it, it's not sad. It's the truth. That this perversion of truth, when James Rice first came to the Overcomer last year, that's what you heard him say. He talked about he would stand before the Pope. Uh, James, this is what Ralph said. Let me jog your memory a little bit. You know, Jesus is going to come. Another thing I've said, after my death, within six months, and I tell you, don't plan on moving around and playing around for six months. Uh, James, was that clear? About what Ralph said? See, the devil is very smart. I'm getting ready to die. And if I'm not right with God, if what I have preached is not true, All right. I'm a liar. All right. Let's, let's hear what Ralph preached. You, be this, 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 uh, you make the decision of whether you're hearing truth or whether you're hearing a lie. Because if these things don't come to pass, they're lies. If they come to pass, then they are the truth. You better be ready. You see? This is what Ralph said, 2015. Another thing I've said. Right. After my death, within six months, and I tell you, don't plan on moving around and playing around for six months. You better be ready. You say, preacher, how do you keep saying that? Well, those are the things that God told me. God said it. It is so. He told me, as I come to the end of my life, that I'd be taken or brought before the Pope of Rome, and there would then be my death. Now, you heard Ralph's own words, what he said about his death. And what happens if he doesn't preach the truth? See, the devil is very smart. I'm getting ready to die. And if I'm not right with God, if what I have preached is not true, All right. I'm a liar. Uh, is that clear? But according to James now, uh, those lies are really, you don't hold it to the letter of uh, what Ralph said. You have to go by the Spirit. I'll put that up there after. I want you to hear what Ralph said, though. 
Now, whether the Pope himself orders it okay. or someone else does it, in order, whatever, when I die after my departure, Jesus will come. Well, I don't believe that. But all I can say to you is that doesn't change my faith. I wish I had said these things, but they came out of my mouth. I'm responsible for them. I will have to face the judgment on them one way or the other, and the time of that judgment is drawing nigh. Wow. Is that the judgment? See, the devil is very smart. Die. And if I'm getting ready to die. And if I'm not right with God, if what I have preached is not true, all right. I'm a liar. Amen. And all liars. All. That's right. Go to hell. Uh you remember he said he had to face the judgment or reckoning time? And he did. He faced the judgment, and his reckoning time came on April the 3rd, 2021. All right. Uh, Oh, if you folk could only understand what, what God's trying to do. I remember how God told me, before I'm done, I'm going to have 200 people living on a community. We have about 70 or 80 right now. That never happened. Not one time did he even come close to it. Like I said, it was a little over 100 people when I was there at one time. That was about the most. 110, 111, something like that. But it never got past that at all. You know, Jesus is going to come. Another thing I've said, after my death, within six months, and I tell you, don't plan on moving around and playing around for six months. You better be ready. Um, let's see here. Okay, I got to go back to this one. See, the devil is very smart. I'm getting ready to die. And if I'm not right with God... If what I have preached is not true, all right. I'm a liar. Amen. And all liars, all, That's right. go to hell. You know, Jesus is going to come, another thing I've said, after my death, within six months. And I tell you, don't plan on moving around and playing around for six months. You better be ready. I think that's pretty clear, brothers and sisters. Um, what was going on there with that? I'm just looking at what direction I'm going to take this now. All right, we'll go in this direction for the time being. About because we're going to get into the uh, adulterous perversion of Ralph and his lifestyle with Rose Larrabee and many other women. But this is how Ralph corrupted. Here is the hypocrisy in Ralph. Stare. And the reason I use these things is because this is the kind of stuff that goes out over the radio. And people hear little excerpts here and there. But don't get the full. Well, God's going God's to actually reveal to them the, the actual truth in these lies and deception that Ralph has been putting out for years. But this is one thing that he mentioned after Brother Wayne Douglas ministered back in 1998. When he got done with his message, this is what Ralph said. I used to say years ago, if a man liked to see his wife dancing with some other man, the only reason he'd like to do it is because he wanted to dance with somebody else's wife. No decent man would ever like that. Now, let me refer to, at this point, Dennis Larrabee, the pimp of Rose Larrabee, the man that pimped the woman Rose Larrabee to Ralph Starr once he was able to move on to the land there in Kennedy, South Carolina, back in early 2002, three or four, whatever it was. Uh, this is what Ralph says, though. No decent man would even want that, his wife, to be in the arms of another man. No 
decent woman would want to be in the arms of another man. No decent woman. That tells you the kind of woman that rolls nerve, yes. She's not decent. No, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. Amen. So we stand. Good preaching, Brother Wayne. Good preaching. Amen. Now, he tried to cover his sin. I paid more when I hid my daughter's affairs than I have by being open. Now, he's, you can hear him gasping for breath here. It's almost like he's got gravel in his mouth. The bread of the seat is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. That's all I remind me of when I hear him talk like this. But listen to what he says about his adultery. How he's actually justified and says he's not even committing adultery, even though he's in full-blown living with another man's wife that he refers to all the time at what you hear. Because I don't believe I'm committing adultery now. I really don't. Mm. No, I don't. How about this? This is what Ralph said about David. Now this man has a heart after God. Oh, yeah? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. An adulterer, a fornicator, a cow molester. Now, what he's saying right there is things that they're saying about Ralph, not David. You heard what Ralph said, a man after God's own heart. Yeah, yeah, you child molester, you this, you that. Now, listen to what he says what David was. <laughs> That's what David was all in things. David was a child molester, a fornicator. He committed adultery. But uh, a child molester, you see, I'm telling you, the man was, you talk about blaspheming God. Yeah, he was a, a wretched sinner. Amen. Yeah. No doubt he was a wretched sinner. But he found grace in the eyes of the Lord to turn from his perversion. Um... I like to go back at, uh, at this point to the uh, 1987 prophecy where Ralph actually talked about his own state of being. Hear me, my people. The day of judgment is at hand. The day of retribution is at hand. You have walked before me in total, complete rebellion and disregard to my words of holiness. You have spurned my cry of love. You have rejected my offer of mercy. You have walked in your own ways. Now, isn't that dramatic? That's very dramatic. He put that reverb echo in there. But the point is, is that Ralph actually it's what they call gaslighting. He's actually, and it's just like you see the politicians do today, he's actually doing what he's actually saying right here. Yet, he's projecting it on everybody else. I have spoken softly. I have cried aloud. And you said we will not listen. We will not do that which he has asked us to do. You think I have not heard you? You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. With your mouth you worship me, but in your deeds, in your lifestyle, in your actions, in the way you live, you dishonor me. You have even gone further than that. You have embarrassed me. You have now, this is an amazing, in exact detail, the man Ralph there lived just like what he's talking right here. These very words, but yet they never penetrated his heart because his heart was impenitent. You've used my name and you have lived in such filth. Perfect example. You have practiced such on the holy lifestyle. Now, I believe somewhere along the line, I don't even believe he actually had a born again experience. I believe he had a religious experience and really didn't believe that there was really a God. I Because you, you can't talk like this and live the kind of life that the man lived without not believing God. 
or without or for believing God for talking like this. This man lived in filth, perversion, ungodliness, and yet he could talk like this because he didn't believe there was really a God. I remember when he told a story about a man named Faith Spencer, where the guy turned on God after he'd seen all these miracles God did, but then when he looked around and seen the suffering, he didn't even believe, and said, well, how could God let these people suffer like this? And he actually turned away from believing God, period. After he's seen profound healing miracles, he actually turned away from God. But I believe that's somewhere along the line, Ralph. It's just like it said, like I, 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 I let you hear earlier about the full fretteth against God. He hates God somewhere, even though he professes that he knows him. Like the Pharisees, he hates God. Think of it, many idolatrous states, and then you get up and say, it doesn't matter to me, a holy God. And then you use my name and justify it. What? Did you hear that? You get up out of your adulterous states. Let's see if we can come back. Hear here. me, my people. Other than that, you have embarrassed me. You have used my name, and you have lived in such filth. You have practiced such unholy lifestyles. Think of it, many idolatrous states, and then you get up and say, it doesn't matter to me, a holy God. And then you use my name and justify it. Wow. What a profound way that I actually ended that clip there when I'm going to go right to this, what he just said uh, before he died last year. And he said, you, you use my name and you justify your ungodly lifestyle. He tried to cover his sin. I paid more when I hid my dozen affairs than I have by being open. Because I don't believe I can pay now. I really don't. Wow. Exact same thing that he said at the end of the clip from the 87 Prophecy. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm just going down memory lane with the depths of Satan that worked through a man that you see on the screen there, Ralph Gordon Stair. The one who, uh, James Rice said, You know, as much as we talk about uh, the heathen and, you know, they hadn't received the prophet and they hadn't done this, and here we at, are we, we have, and we, we're worse off than they are. If you heard the voice, you received the witness, then live like it. You heard the voice. They received the witness. And then he says, well, then live like it. Uh, here is the way Ralph lived. I want to be like old, old Mary. <laughs> so don't touch him, Mary. You, you, you know, uh, you, you, you don't, don't hug him. Do you people realize how wrong that is? That's now, this is Ralph justifying, just like it said in that 87 prophecy. You use my name and you live in such filth. And then here he justifies his perversion with the scripture of Mary and Jesus at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because we're so carnal in our mind that we can't take these physical things that God gave us to demonstrate our love. Uh, they take these physical things that God gave them to demonstrate his love, knowing that the physical things are you're supposed to crucify the flesh with its affections and lust. And set your affections on things above, not on the earth. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O oh, generation of vipers! How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. I think that's pretty clear what Jesus Christ said there. All of us are going to give an account. And we are in a day of judgment right now. And we are going to give an account for every word we speak throughout this day 
and every day. I believe before even the day's over, we give an account of those things done on that day. Let's listen again to the prophecy fulfillment of Ralph Gordon Stair in his own words from 1987. Now you have gone past the point of no return. Uh, what did James say? You know, with our mouth we say, yeah, we believe Jesus is coming and believe uh, Brother Stair was the prophet signed the messenger of the covenant, but that's not how we come to the time now. Uh, here's what your prophet messenger of the covenant said, James Rice, about the point of no return, which is the road you're on. Warnings have meant nothing to you. Amen. You are persistent in your determination to live your own godly, sinful, lustful, passionate lives. You have said no to God. You have said no to my word. You have done despite to the spirit of grace. You have blasphemed the Holy One of Israel. You have crucified him afresh and anew. You have spilt his blood one more time by your blanted open and sins, and I will not tolerate it no longer, saith God. Wow. That's what happened last year to Ralph. April 3rd, 2021. God said, I've had enough, and I'm not going to tolerate it any longer. All right, we're just going to close out this se section here because like I said um, we're going to go on with uh, the perversion of Ralph and Rose and James and Dennis, in this next section that we come to, because it's just astounding that James Rice is not walking in the steps of the Savior, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. He's walking in the steps of his father, the devil, the same ones that Ralph Stair set the course for. For those that live there on the farm in Kennedy, South Carolina. So we'll get to that right now. But in Jesus' name, we ask him to bless you with his truth and his divine grace in this hour we live in. Because we need it to cut through the darkness that is just about ready to be felt throughout all the world. Just like it was in the land of Egypt. Gross darkness which covered the people. And a thick, so thick that you could feel it. You can feel it today. You just turn on the news and you can feel the darkness coming from every direction. So we just bless you, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name, till we meet again. It's my prayer. Amen.